today we are checking out Salon Privé. We can't leave you alone on your channel. I'm just desperate to appear on it once every six months. Welcome to Sports and Touring and today we are at Blenheim Palace near Oxford and we are checking out Salon Privé. I'm here to meet up with Sophie of In The Bag PR who's looking after one of the main sponsors, Pommery Champagne. So let's go and find Sophie and I'm going to show you some of the incredible cars along the way. Right, so just on the approach to Blenheim Palace, a uh, McLaren 12C, MP4 12C. Now this one, not only is it in a very, very special colour, this has the MSO front bumper. These are quite rare to find. And here we've got one of my son's favourite cars and one of my favourite cars, the McLaren 675LT. We have a Koenigsegg. This is the Ajera. This is a Gianarelli. These are very, very rare cars. I believe a French manufacturer. Uh, quite an unusual design. Apparently very, very brutal. Now this is a car you do not see every day. This is a Zenvo. The presence of this car is absolutely incredible. The amount of carbon, oh. I actually haven't seen one of these in person before. And of course, Salon Privé is exactly the kind of place you'd expect to see it. Look at the size of that roof scoop. It is absolutely crazy. And that rear spoiler. As you walk in, the first thing you're greeted with is this glass house and this incredible Pagani Huayra. This car is one of those cars that is on a poster on a young person's wall. I know that if I was young enough when this car came out, uh, it would be a poster on my wall. It's just mind blowing. I've just managed to find Sophie and guess where she was? At the bar in the Pommery tent. <laughs> because she's working representing Pombery Champagnes. Sophie runs a company called In The Bag PR. What kind of stuff do you do? We look after luxury lifestyle and foodie brands. And actually Sophie and myself have been working together for quite a few years because when Damani was racing, yes, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that Damani was racing for a while. Sophie was running the PR for a simulator company and got in touch with us and asked me wanted to come down and play on the simulators and make some content, so we did. And we've been working together in all sorts of ways ever since, haven't yeah. we? Yeah, seven years later, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> It's not so windy now. It's given a chance for us to have a little walk around and check out these incredible Pagani's. And uh, this one here is in a solid black color. And we were just checking out the blue one over there. And there was something special about the paint. It all changes as you're walking around. Look how lovely it looks in the blue when the sunshine oh lights God. up the blue. And those, those wing mirrors, they just look crazy. They look like a beautiful leaf. But you've got to look inside. It's like a work of art. Have you ever seen the interior of a car that looks that gorgeous? Right here we have got the absolutely stunning Ferrari LaFerrari. This was obviously a very special edition car. You're all car nuts watching this channel anyway, so I know that you'll know everything there is to know about this car. Hybrid, mad performance, but there's something about the presence of this car that I, I really think is hard to match. Right next to it, of course, we've got the McLaren P1 looking just absolutely awesome with the uh, active aero wing sticking up and proud right next to a McLaren F1 GTR looks phenomenal and right here we've got the Lancia Stratos these are very rare absolute rally legends <laughs> Sophie filming me and I'm filming Sophie filming me and here we have the McLarens these are road legal cars this is the McLaren F1 GTR long tail looks absolutely stunning I don't even know how much these are but what I do know is the standard McLarens were going for about 25 million in the US for US dollars at auction. The, the McLaren F1, what's special about it, as any car nut will know, is the seating position. So have you seen the seating position in this? You've got to go and check it out. Go and have a look. You sit in the middle of the car 
there's three seats. There's one seat here, yeah. the one in the middle, and then the one on the other side. Getting into it is an absolute pain because you kind of have to first sit down on the first on the first seat, then kind of push yourself over to the edge of the middle seat, then swing your legs in. It's an and art. It's an, it is. It's an art. It, it's an art. So I'm here with Julian Lunu. He's the CEO of Pommery Champagne. So Pommery is one of the sponsors for Salon Privé. Indeed, we've been a sponsor since uh, the beginning mm -hmm. at, uh, at the Hurlingham in London. So uh, yeah, since then we've been working with the with the Bagley Brothers. We've got a very strong link with the UK. We've We've been the first house creating a brew champagne back in the 19th century and that brew champagne was made to please the English and the British consumers. So that's why we've been interconnected with the UK since then. And about cars, we were in Le Mans for the 24 hours last week. Uh, and, and that's one of the partnerships we have around the car world. A connection between classic cars, supercars and champagne is probably obvious now. Yes, clearly the connection between Pommery and Salon Privé has been there for quite some time. And I know that Sophie would like to spend some time catching up with you. So I'm going to let you get back to her. I'll and you to work, right? Yes, indeed. And I'm going to get back to looking at some of these amazing cars. So I'm here with Victor from Angler, who has what I would call a hugely innovative creation. We call it super quad because of the way how you sit on it. Mm -hmm. You don't have a steering wheel, you have a steering bar. So you sit on it and ride it like a bike or super quad. Mm -hmm. But it has the dimension power of a, of a, of a car. Mm -hmm. It's a 5.2 litre V10 engine, which is twin supercharged with 1,100 horsepower and wow. a weight of only 1,100 kilos. So it achieves top speed of 217 miles an hour and goes from the zero to 60 in up to 2.5 seconds. We've all been saying for years, since we saw um, Back to the Future and the DeLorean, when we're gonna get our flying car, and finally, it's here. And basically, we've got a flying car here, which will take us from, let's say we are here at Blenheim Palace, we can fly from Oxford directly to Paris in probably somewhere around about three hours. Drive down the Champs-Élysées, take in the views, fill up with regular car fuel, and return then back to Oxford, all within the space of, say, three to three and a half hours. Built-in redundancy, we have two Rotax-powered engines, which are 912 fuel-injected, 100 horsepower each, and this will propel you to an excess of 100 miles an hour on the road and over 100 knots flying speeds. So. So uh, look who I just bumped into. Back again. I basically can't leave you alone on your channel. I'm just desperate to appear on it once every six months. And if you don't recognize the face because of the mask, you must recognize the voice. This is Sam from Seafood Glass. And maybe I've got a branding somewhere. I was like, oh, no one recognized me today. And then I forgot I've got a massive logo of my own channel on my head. So <laughs> that wasn't the, thing, the simplest thing to So obviously you're at Salon Privé because it is the place to be right now. For sure. What have you seen today so far that oh you think is God. like really standing out? There's almost too much, I'll be honest. The thing that I'm obsessing over is a Zagato Aston yeah, it's red with a white dot, which oh. for me is like gold. Uh, <laughs> so anything that's red with a white dot, I'm happy. I've just been checking out this amazing F12 TDF on the Furlonger stand. This is essentially like TDF number one. It was like a prototype car that became the UK press car. Vettel drove it, Chris Harris drove it, then it was in the museum. Anyway, it's a cool heritage and history for a Ferrari nerd like me. <laughs> awesome. Well, listen, thank you very much for stopping and saying hello again. It was really nice to see you on Cheddar Gorge last year and then to see you achieve your incredible 500,000 subscribers. Thank so you very much. congratulations Thank you very much. on that. You far behind me. <laughs> I think we're quite a way behind you'll you right now. Up. You'll catch up, I believe. Oh, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. But anyway, thanks again, it's nice good to see you. To see you. Now, right here, we have got the McLaren Elva. Absolutely amazing car, four litre V8, 804 horsepower. And this is actually the most powerful V8 in a McLaren so far. 0 60 in about three seconds. It's actually got more power than the McLaren Senna. However, what's interesting about this car is the way that the air bubble works. So there is clearly no windscreen and there is actually a vent on the front bonnet where as the air comes in underneath the car, it pushes 
the air through there and it creates like an air bubble around the driver which I believe works up to 70 miles an hour however that won't stop heavy objects so it's not a force field it won't stop a, a stone that flies up it that can still hit you so they still recommend you wear a race helmet at higher speeds however at lower speeds you can drive this around without uh, feeling like you uh, you have to be squinting the whole time so here we have the ferrari monza sp2 we know it's the sp2 because it's got two seats uh, the SP1 has only one seat. These have 800 horsepower and a seven speed dual clutch. This is one of the most beautiful cars I think on the planet right now. And here we have the Koenig's X stand with the incredible one to one with that magical 1000 horsepower per ton ratio. We've also got the Ruggiero, which is an engineering masterpiece in my opinion. The carbon on these looks absolutely amazing. But what's really caught my eye is actually the Jumeira. This is essentially a hypercar, which is a two plus two coupe. You've got space for four full grown adults on the inside. The access to the rear is actually feasible uh, without having to move the seats forward. Now what's incredible about the Jumeira is its power plant. It has a two litre, three cylinder inline turbocharged engine plus three electric motors. The two litre, yes, two litre, three cylinder engine produces 600 horsepower on its own. The two rear electric motors produce another 500 horsepower each, and the front motor produces another 400 horsepower on top of that. Due to drivetrain loss, the actual total output of the car is more around the 1700 horsepower mark. So we're by the Lotus stand, and we have their incredible Avaya. This is a 2.2 million pound car with 2,000 horsepower, 1,700 newton meters of torque. They're only gonna be making 130 of them. They're all gonna be left-hand drive. It will do naught to 300 kilometers an hour in under nine seconds, which is four seconds faster than, let's say the usual suspects in the hypercar market that do very fast top speeds. Now, some of the details on this car are absolutely amazing. This front splitter is so aggressive. Now, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on camera, but there are so many opportunities for air to flow through the bodywork here, through underneath the splitter, outside through the wheel arch. This massive hole in the door uh, that allows air to flow from behind the wheel arch, relieving pressure there. The interior is absolutely stunning. Now, despite this being a British car, they're actually only gonna be making these in left-hand drive. And uh, this steering wheel looks phenomenal. Now. I don't know if that's the steering wheel that's gonna be on the final production version, but I really do hope it is. Now, one of the things I really like is on the interior, you've got this center console that while it's capacitive uh, touch uh, in order to interact with these things, you can actually feel your way around where the different buttons are. And this is something that's often missing from a very flat touch screen style approach. And the Venturi tunnels that start behind the door they go all the way through to the back of the car. This has a number of active aero components. The rear diffuser has a wing at the bottom there, and this rear wing rises up in order to add downforce uh, in corners uh, and potentially as an air brake. I love the illuminated rear signage. Whether that will be allowed on a future car based on regulations, I don't know, but we'll see. But these uh, tail lights around the Venturi tunnels that flow all the way from the back of the door are absolutely just incredible. Right, so things are wrapping up here at Salon Privé. It's been an absolutely fantastic day. I've really enjoyed it. How about you, Sophie? It's been amazing. Yeah, you the cars are amazing, it's been windy but sunny and yeah, it's been brilliant. You've got some really good photos for Pomery Champagne as well? Yeah, fab photos. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing some of those. Make sure you send them over I and I might even drop them into the video like here and here <laughs> and here. So make sure you follow In The Bag PR on Instagram and Pomery Champagne and if you've enjoyed today, make sure you give us a thumbs up let us know in the comments below what car really stood out for you and hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, choose notifications on all videos and I'll see you next time on Sports and Touring.